And amen. Amen and amen. What to do with my Bible? Yo. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> They're cheeky down here, aren't they? Well done, mate. That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I can see that. The spontaneous worship to the Holy Spirit was by the Holy Spirit, and you guys was wonderful. And thanks, Mick and Evie. Great job as normal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Actually, we'll start with the scripture. It'll be good, wouldn't it? I want to speak to you about growing in the things of God, you know. I don't know what to name this preach, but I want to tell you, if you get one, one thing out of it, it's this, that the Holy Spirit is substance. The Holy Spirit is substance, heavenly substance. You get hold of this. You start seeing signs and wonders in your life. You won't want to work out how it works. You just be thankful that His presence is with you. Amen. I I remember old uh, Norm. You all know Norm. He had the accident a few years ago. Sits at the back on Sundays with his wife Jill they they nearly got wiped out he died three or four times in the hospital and and I can remember when Norm first came here he came from Wyala or Port Augusta and um, he turned up at a tent meeting in just the clothes he stood in (laughs) and he ended up uh, I lent him a jacket Reminds me of that. I never saw that jacket again. I mean, I, <laughs> I lent him a jacket and he said, do you mind if I stay on the land over this weekend? And we, it was our tent weekend. I said, no, there's a hut there. We, I bought a whole heap of little tents, you know, those two-man tents or one-man tent. You just bend a piece of rod and and it would hold it up. And because I didn't have rooms or places for people to stay, I thought the best thing is if we bought a heap of these tents and uh, people who needed a bed here opened up the tent, they could all sleep in the hut and and the whole place was full of these little tents. (laughs) And so Normie stayed in that tent, but a week later he's still there in the tent. (laughs) And he just he was just one of those men that would pursue God with all his heart, not give up. His life was in the toilet, but his chasing God was exemplary. And um, I was talking to him about the second or third day, and I said, you know, I said, you can fill that tent with the presence of the Holy Spirit just by worshipping God in there and setting your heart to focus on Jesus and nothing else. And Norm did that, and I'll never forget, when he came out of that tent, he was like shining, shiny, shiny, shiny. It's like someone had put a fluoro lamp into his mouth, and he was just glowing. He'd spent that week with the Lord. He ended up staying on and uh, I needed a hand doing concrete. He was an ex concreter as well, so we worked together for eight years. And I've got to tell you, he lived on this block. He was a caretaker of it. He loved this place with a passion because the presence of God 
is on this block. It was dedicated to him. Covenant was made. We were sharing that earlier, weren't we? The presence of God's in this place, whether you turn up or not. Do you know that? Whether you turn up or not. But when you come and you bring the presence of God with you as well, you know what that does? Makes this place shiny. The presence of God's here. And I've learned over the years not to learn how it works as much as to know he's here. I read a book when I was a young Christian called Brother Lawrence. And he was a uh, Jesuit, I think, priest. But he spent all his time in the kitchen of this monastery and all he did was search for God. Kept his eye on the Lord. Understood that the presence of God, that God was in him and God, and he was in God. Say, God in me. And me in God. If you grasp this little principle that when the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes you, that you're going to end up glowing. Do you know that? If you keep walking with him. I wanted this, this light here. I'll give you some scripture for it so you don't think I'm a heretic. But I don't care if you think that anyway. <laughs> so, so, can you all see this is a dark here? Just switch the lights off there. Do you see, do you see that there? Can you see? That's terrible. Let me find... Something a bit more solid. Screw that. No, that's. Oh, it could be. Try this. See that? See that body? Anybody got a rifle? <laughs> see that? See that body? When God comes to live in a man, that's what happens. He gives you salvation. He pays the price through the blood. Jesus pays the price for you. So that God can come and live on the inside of you. That's not a bad thing there. Okay? So Jesus can come and live on the inside of you. And all he does is expect us to come into repentance regularly. Otherwise this is what happens. Yeah, let's see there. See that? I think I'll make a dinosaur up there, no. <laughs> I got a little concentrate. See, see that there? If there's anything that we haven't dealt with, the light gets blocked out by that thing that we haven't dealt with. Amen? We whack it on again. When God comes, the light of God comes into you. That's the substance of the Holy Spirit. That is the substance that he is. God himself comes into your life as a substance. It's a heavenly substance. It's not an earthly substance. It's a substance from heaven. He's a person. He's got a personality. It's God's person given to us. The privilege of that blows my mind because I got hold of that when I was a young Christian. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I got hold of that and I started reading the Bible and everywhere all I could see was the glory of God comes upon man. And the world sees that if you allow him to manifest through you. That's growing in God. Not doing it your way, doing it his way. Prerequisite to that is hearing God. You need to hear God. God's given us many, many things. He's given us visions. He's given us trances. He's given us face to face. The same as Moses. What's it say in the book of Joshua? As I was with Moses, so I am with you. Moses wasn't just a prophet. Moses was a son of God. 
a servant of God, a friend of God. And that wonderful substance of the Holy Spirit, that spiritual substance, everything has a body. The Bible speaks about different things have different bodies. Amen? You know, a pear tree has pears. has a different skin to an apple and, a, and an apple tree. A frog looks like a frog. It looks different to you. I know some of you look like frogs, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm only joking, okay? <laughs> don't, don't talk to me about other things because I get taken here sometimes. Okay? <laughs> Croak, <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> You've got a different body to a frog, okay? <laughs> You got, I, I'm sorry I can't help it, I've got to muck around to me today. <laughs> the Spirit of God loves me mucking around, I've got to tell you. I, he, <laughs> you know why? Because it brings a joy into my heart. Yeah. Some of you are too serious for living, really. <laughs> you are. You're too serious. You're alive. Christ living in you. My God, that should bring a joy. What a privilege. The Holy Spirit of God living in you. I want to talk about this light for a second. Just have a listen to this, John, John uh, 1. Sorry, this is not my Bible. I've pinched it from someone. Uh, In the beginning was the Word. Say Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Okay? We all know that, don't we? we? We can meditate on that forever and a day and it still means the same thing. Jesus and the Word are one and the same. Amen? And he came from God. He came here from God. In Spanish it says, En el principio estaba el verbo. Anybody hear verbal and it ring a bell (laughs) it's a doing word the verb in the beginning was the verb amen the doing word the doing word you have the doing word in you you have the doing word living in you I don't want to preach about that the word was God He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. And without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the word was the life of men. The light that was in him or the life that was in him was the light of men. Are you listening? Now when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you can start to glow. Jesus on the mountain transfiguration was so filled with the Spirit of God, the life of God, he started to glow. Moses would go into the tent of meeting and he'd spend time with God and he would start to glow. The light of God filled him. You affect people when you are full of the Spirit of God. The atmosphere around you changes. I've got to tell you, wherever I go, the atmosphere changes. Generally, I start telling jokes. (laughs) That's not the atmosphere that changes. But it's the presence of God that changes the atmosphere around. It affects people's lives. We, we are useless if we don't allow the Spirit to fill us. We are useless if we don't allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. We are useless if we don't obey what we hear. It's like that light. You get a blockage. It's called rebellion. <laughs> None of you here are like that, I know that. But I'm just telling you, this happens out there. (laughs) It actually happens in me sometimes. 
We are useless unless we allow the Holy Spirit to take hold of us. He's the one that raised Jesus from the dead. He's the substance of heaven that lived in Jesus. Uh, okay, give it to me. <laughs> Let me stand on it. <laughs> hey? What's that? I'm going to get you up to sing it in a second. <laughs> The Spirit of God wants to fill every one of you. Amen. He wants to fill every person in this room. Amen. And you know, people are going to come up to you and say, what have you been doing? You look different. What have you been doing? Something is sparkling in you. Okay, I just want to know if you remembered the song. Some... Something is sparkling in you. Something inside you. I'll tell you about a fast, okay? That's, this is for you. When we fast, we purge the old wineskin. Jesus talked about fasting when he was talking about wineskins and the disciples said to him, why should we fast? John, John the Baptist's disciples don't fast. <laughs> Why should we? And Jesus said, you don't need to while I'm with you. But when I've gone, you'll need to fast. Why do you fast? Because you put your flesh to death. That's what he declared it. Dead, to f dead, dead. It won't have dominion over your life anymore. So you're pulling down the old carnal nature. And as you pray in the spirit, you're starting to fill this body with the presence of God. You want to start shining like a fluoro lamp? Fast. God said it's purging the old wine skin. I can't pour new wine into an old wine skin. I can't pour my spirit into you until you put your flesh out of the way. That flesh is that little dot in the light. Jesus wants to shine through you as that... I'll do that again. Jesus wants to shine through you. Lights, please. Star. Jesus wants to shine through you. He wants people to see... I'm sorry their face isn't there, but he wants to see, see people to see that wonderful shine on your face. But you, this is your carnal nature, okay? Uh, it can be anything. It can be anger, bitterness, forgiveness, unforgiveness. It might be lust. It might be deception. But it casts a shadow and it blocks out that perfect light that Jesus wants to fill you with. You getting this? Now we have a few of these, right? I'm sorry, I only did one. But say I put ten of those things that you've got to deal with in there. And God wants to use you. He wants to shine his light through you. He's going to take you into a place where people need to see the power of God. But hang on, I'm busy. And my flesh is strong. And I don't really need to prepare myself like that. Because your flesh is ruling you. <laughs> I want to tell you, being filled with the Spirit's got nothing at all to do with the flesh or the soul. It's got to do with your spirit being alive to Jesus Christ. Your spirit is clean because of the words that he spoke to you. Do you know that? So where, where does all this blockage come? I, I, I look in this place, at times we get people who... who can't walk, they're crippled, or they were born with certain things. And I think, God, you need to set them free because it's available to us. You need to set them free. And they walk out of here the same way they walked in. Do you know what that does?
to a spirit-filled man. It's a heartache. It's a huge disappointment because he gave us an edict in Mark 16. He said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You can do miracles because they have some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what blocks it? What blocks that light? What makes me still look fairly dark in the face? Hang on, I'll just look up there. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, I can get some creams that make me look really shiny. <laughs> that certainly doesn't do it. It's got to be a natural... It's got to be a natural light that's coming from the inside of you. And it shows when you're walking close to God. Yeah, it does. Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration. He spent time with the Father and he shone. They couldn't look on his face. Moses, they couldn't look on his face in that, in that tent meeting. They shouldn't be able to look on our faces when... when when we glow, I've been up here at times and my face starts glowing and sometimes I look at you and I can tell who's praying and who's not because <laughs> your faces light up. Isn't that wonderful? So then I started to understand that the more of the spirit in me, the more I affect people. The more of the spirit of God is in me. So if I purge my flesh... And I realise that Romans 6 says, Sin no longer has dominion over me. Sin does not have dominion. It cannot dominate your life. That's what that means. Oh, we still sin. Some of you lie to yourselves. We still sin. But it can't dominate you. And the closer you get to getting filled with the Spirit of God, the less that it can dominate you. You start to see that little light shining through you. He shines through you. When people see you, they see Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and say, when I look at you, I see Jesus. Billy, I definitely see Jesus in you. When I look at you. You know, I know stuff about you all because I'm your minister, Okay. But I want to tell you, when I look at you, I can see Jesus. Now how much Jesus I can see depends on how much of that stuff you've allowed him to deal with. Because you've got to grow into that. We're all busy pointing out each other's faults. Do you know that? Yeah, some people think walking in the spirit is saying, Oh yes, so you've got a spirit of lust. Well, I want to tell you, most Christians can't tell the difference between lust and the anointing. Do you realise that? Oh, I felt goosebumps. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> most Christians can't tell the difference. And yet we have the gifts that are being given to us. You see, the Holy Spirit's not just a substance. He's everything of God. If you want to know something... You ask him. He's been given to you to lead and to guide you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you face to face. He doesn't just want to give you a trance. Oh, I've walked in trances. And I've seen a lot of people who don't know the Lord walk in trances as well. I go to India, you'll see trances. <laughs> they have festivals where they throw colour at each other and they get into a trance. Their eyes rolling out in the back of their heads. <laughs> full of something exactly I've seen trances I've had trances from God I've, I remember in, in Israel the rabbi who got set free a man who had two days to live two days to live because the kidney machine that was, he was hooked up to had stopped working and was throwing rubbish back into him rather than taking it out of him And his son was at the kibbutz. And I said to, to some guys while we were having breakfast, I was, they were all saying, oh, the, the, the uh, rabbi's 
father, the, the, he was a Hasidic rabbi, is dying. They've given him two days to live. And I said to him, I said, he came up to my room angry as I told him I was making fun of his father dying. Now my own dad was dying and had less than two months to live and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me why he was well, what, what it was that made him sick. One of those things that was still shining, <laughs> wouldn't allow the light to shine fully in him, made him sick. You getting this? Praise God. And this rabbi had the same problem or a similar problem. He had one of those things he hadn't dealt with. And they took me to his deathbed and God spoke to me. But before he spoke to me, he didn't speak to me one-on-one -on -one like he normally does. He spoke to me through a trance. He showed me, I'm standing there watching a little boy and I'm looking through his eyes, not mine. And I'm looking at him and there's two men in front of him in uniform and they're shooting his mum and dad. You know what his problem was? Hatred and anger for the people who shot his mum and dad. Praise God. Trances are okay. That's one way God speaks to you. With Moses, he took Miriam and Aaron apart because there was a bit of conjecture about who the boss was. And he put Moses to one side, but he spoke to Aaron and, and Miriam. And he said, listen, he said, to you I speak, you're my prophets. Now they didn't even know they were prophets, okay? And I don't think he'd spoken to them ever until this time, if you read that whole scripture passage. But he said to them, he said, I speak to my prophets in trances. I speak to them in dreams and visions. He said, but my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face, one on one. And I want to tell you, in this time that we live, we have one on one with God because his Holy Spirit has been released to us. So the more you allow him to fill you, the clearer you're going to hear. And you need to practice talking to him. If you don't talk to him, you'll never hear him. <laughs> this, this, is, this is like kindergarten stuff. <laughs> You've got to hear God and develop in the hearing. Why do you have to develop in the hearing? Because he said eternal life is knowing God. How do you get to know someone? Hartley, I get to know you because I can speak to you. And as you speak to me, I get to know you. Amen? Praise God. Mick. Oh, I don't think I know Mick. Um, <laughs> Mick and I speak regularly, don't we? So I know, I know his quirks. <laughs> and he knows mine. <laughs> Amen. Because we converse. We have relationship. And God wants us to be people who have relationship through his Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is substance. It's tangible. Faith is substance. It's tangible. The Holy Spirit is a tangible part of God. And he has lent him to us. Do you know the privilege that is? That he trusts us to receive his Holy Spirit. He paid the price, paid the blood, brought redemption to us. Why? So his Spirit could come and live in us. And he wants you to be shiny because this world now needs you. He wants you to be shiny because the world is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. This whole world is shaking at the moment. And you see, you're feeling it, you're seeing it on the news, you're seeing it in churches, your neighbours. Everything's being shaken. Christians are being shaken at the moment. On purpose. And the Bible says this in the book of Haggai. 
It says there's a great shaking. Don't fear. Don't fear. He says because the eternal things will stick and stay in. They're the things that will prosper. The things filled with the Holy Spirit. He's life. He brings in and he administrates a law of the Spirit. And that law of the Spirit transcends and overrides all the things of the flesh. If you think you're having a hard time, hand it back to God. Pray in the Spirit. The only way I know to allow the Holy Spirit to manifest in me is what he's taught me. I haven't been taught by men. I've been taught by the Spirit of God. I haven't been taught. I'm disobedient. I've got to tell you, I'm honest before God. I know my faults. And I can be disobedient. I know you goody two-shoes wouldn't be, but... (laughs) But I'm not a religious bigot. I don't want to put laws on people. I don't want to do things in my understanding. I want to do them in his. I want the freedom to be able to move in the spirit in this place. This place is open. It's probably one of the freest places you've ever been to worship God. It is. I know. Mate, I've been in some of those places. and They stink of religion. (laughs) Huh? Well, it is. It is religion. That's what it is. Religion can't help you. You know, the, the Latin base of the word religion is relegar. In other words, tie you up. Do you know that? That's what it means. Relegar it means to tie you. And God wants to release you. He wants the Holy Spirit to be able to move freely through you. He wants to be able to tell you to do things and you be obedient to that because you don't want to hurt him. Because you don't want to hurt your brothers and sisters and bring them down. And it becomes a driving force in the end. You want to make sure you tread warily with God. That's the fear of God that we were talking about before. He wants that fear. It's cleansing It's not to put you down, it's to lift you up. It's the Spirit of God who brings that. Allow yourselves to be filled with the Spirit. Do not be drunk in dissipation, isn't that what it says? Where does it say that? 519, what's the book? Yeah, none of you know, so it doesn't matter. (laughs) It says, it says that. It says don't be filled I'm not going to look at you. I'm going to, now I'm going to look this way so I'm not looking at people, okay? So you can't see where I'm gazing. Don't be filled with alcohol. <laughs> Don't give yourselves away now. Because <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> Don't be filled with alcohol. But be filled with the Spirit of God. Don't be filled with the wrong spirit. I've got to tell you, I still drink. And I was alcoholic. I know you don't want to hear this. This is my confession time. I still have a drink. Yet I was an alcoholic. Until a man of God set me free, a pastor. And he came up to me. And I don't want to be a stumbling block to people who can't stop drinking. But I want to tell you, A pastor set me free. You know what he said to me? It was his 60th birthday. He was a wise old man and I had been struggling for a year to not have a drink. And I mean struggling. I wanted a drink. That was only one of my many habits. But I I tried stopping. And I'll never forget, somehow I got invited to his 60th birthday. And um, I was sitting next to him. I said, Bob, I said, um, I haven't had a drink for about 12 months. But I, I want to buy a bottle of wine and celebrate your birthday. Would you have a drink with me? And he looked at me and said, I certainly would, Raf. And his wife went, boot. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, ow. <laughs> 
And it was the second booty guy, and well, what are you doing? <laughs> and then it became loud and verbal. <laughs> and he said, uh, listen. And she's nudging him saying, he's an alcoholic. And he said, yes, but I'm not. And he said, in Christ, I don't have to have a drink because I'm free. But I'm also free to be able to. True freedom. Those words just hit me like an arrow. I didn't want to drink after that. I didn't want one after that. Total freedom. Had the choice. Not this relegar. Religion won't let you. If the religion says no, I had to, to do that thing. I know you guys don't. <laughs> if someone says no... <laughs> Praise God when I hear freedom in Jesus. Not all things are good for you, but you're free. And when the Holy Spirit comes and fills you, you're free. And the more of the Holy Spirit, the more freedom you walk in. More life, life, life. You walk in life. But I want to tell you, if you don't deal with that with him, don't go tell your brothers and sisters... You put the burden on them. You go straight to the Lord and say, I'm stuffed. <laughs> Help me. I've got this blockage you're trying to shine through me and this thing's still here. Can you remove it? <laughs> no more sleepless nights for you. <laughs> can you remove it? He says, I certainly can. I removed it. 2,024 years ago. Now start walking in the freedom I've won for you. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and listen to him. And you start walking from one increment of glory to the next. And you start to shine. I went to New, New York. Uh, this was in Colorado. I was in Colorado. And they said to me, what are you going to America for? Because the Holy Spirit sent me to read about John G. Lake. And to find out what he had done. He wanted to give me a healing ministry. And he wanted me to see what that man did in 1915. Spokane in uh, Washington State, which was up in the northwest of, of the United States, was the healthiest city in America in 1915. You know why? Because he started a technician school in a place called, um, what was the building called? Anyway, it doesn't matter. He started this technician, health technicians. And people would come and they'd get together, two or three of them, and they were full of the Holy Spirit. And they were shiny. And they'd ask the Lord and he'd speak to them and give them the root cause of people's problems. And they would help the people to deal with those problems and they'd walk out shiny. And in the end, there wasn't a doctor in Spokane in America. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's recorded in the local newspaper in 1915. I went to the newspaper place because I read it in one of his biographies. And I had a look and sure enough, I got invited to, to preach in John Lake's church because they were going to, they just finished or hadn't quite finished building the, the old temple. They bought, built a new church alongside of it but they were restoring the old temple. And I met a man there called Jerry. He was a, a youth pastor. I met the head of that place because God gave me a word for him and sent me to Melbourne where this guy was preaching to, to release the word with accuracy. I, I want to tell you about hearing, but I, I can speak to you about that any time. But I heard, and when I went and delivered this word to this man, he started crying. He was there preaching in a big church in Melbourne. And I caught him at smoko time. They had just had a break. We drove overnight. And I said, sir, I've come all the way from Adelaide because God wanted me to tell you this. He just started crying, just started bawling his eyes out. And he said, oh my God. 
I said, mate, I'm in Spokane in two weeks' time. I've already booked my ticket. The Lord's told me to go and have a look at the Rookery, was the name of the building, that was still built in 1915. He said, I want you to have a look at what that man actually did in that little state. And he spoke to me, just like we're talking now. So within two weeks, I'm off. Denise said, you're not leaving with me without me, so we're off. And then my kids, my kids, I want to tell you about miracles. I said to the kids, come on kids, I said, I, I need money for the tickets. Come and agree with me. They said, no, we don't want to go. While you're away, we can play. <laughs> Isn't that how kids think? Yep. yep. And three days before I'm about to jump on that plane, they changed their mind. <laughs> they ever share this with you? The scallywags, they changed their mind. They said, Dad, we know that your tickets are paid for and you've got $3,000 for expenses that have been given to you. Would you consider putting that into our tickets? We want to go now. I said, I can't get you on a plane with such, such short notice. We're travelling round the world. I, I got round the world tickets. And I said, you're not going on a different plane than me. <laughs> so I said, I'll take you now as long as when we pray, we can get you on every plane that we're on. Thirteen flights. All of them wait-listed with 30 or 40 people waiting to get on them. And I phoned up my travel agent girl. She was a spirit-filled lady in Brisbane. And I said, uh, my kids have changed their mind. Can you, can you get them on my flights? She said, Raf, I've been in this business 20 years. She said, if there's one plane wait-listed, I won't be able to match them up with the same plane. I said, you try. And then all of a sudden she screams the other end of the line. She goes, my God. She said, most of them have just put your kids to the head of the line. <laughs> it's true. You ask my kids, you ask Denise. There was still one to go. I said, don't worry, that'll line up if he's lining the rest up. She said, how are you going to pay? Because she knows I'm a faith man. I said, don't worry, I'll have it before I leave. The very next day, my kids started fasting. The very next day, the money came. And we're on our way. But I want to tell you, the money didn't come to right on the day we're leaving. And we've got to get to Sydney to catch the plane to the States. And the money hasn't turned up. And I've booked and I've promised the agent that I would get the money to them. I'm in Sydney and, and the money turned up and it turned up from the girl who led me to the Lord nearly 20 years before that and I hadn't seen her in 20 years Christine a girl who could hear God had a clarity of hearing filled with the Holy Spirit again she used to shine she'd come to our place I'd think this religious nut she's coming into the place again unsaved I was <laughs> Mate, am I so glad she turned up. I didn't think so at the time. But she would hear clearly and she would tell me what my life was about. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. But I, I could see this is the way to walk with God. This girl had relationship. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to tell you, she phoned, she phoned, just as we're jumping on the plane from Adelaide to Sydney, she said, I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I got the bank transfers. The money's arriving in Melbourne at the ANZ bank. And I said, I don't bank ANZ. I bank, bank SA, how am I going to get this cleared? So she gave me the number of the exchange. So I phoned the bank and they put a beautiful girl on and I said look this is the story this is what's happening I'm, uh, I'm in Sydney now I said I'm about to board a plane I've got to pay the tickets but the money's in your bank and I need it transferred to mine so I can use my card praise God she said I'll walk it round there's a, 
um, a state bank, uh, not state, whoever runs the uh, state bank here, St George's, no, yeah, one of those. Yeah, no, but I, this is Melbourne. This, the money's arrived in Melbourne. Hey, huh? West West Bank. She said, "I'll get it to to that West Bank and get the, you can get the transfers through straight away." It got there within an hour to spare before we jumped on the plane. God cuts things very fine sometimes, but when you're filled with this, the Holy Spirit, you don't have to worry. My kids knocked off all my spending money. So we're flying for a month in the States with $150 in my pocket. They've eaten through that before we've reached the States. And the guy I'd met in Melbourne, who was the head of the Spokane Church, John G. Lake's Church, who had bawled his eyes out, said, if you can get there, he said, I'll look after your accommodation. That night we arrived, it was 36 hours later, we're sitting up in two big double beds eating giant cookies <laughs> that, the, that the hotel gave us free. <laughs> oh, you want to come out on an adventure with me? I've got to tell you, it'll be an adventure. But if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. In fact, in Spokane, I end up doing a meeting. Somehow a meeting opened up to us. I, don't, I still to this day can't work out how. In Colorado it was. And uh, someone here spoke to the head of the full gospel prison ministries, guy for America. And he phoned me. He gets hold of my number in America he phones me he says I heard about you down here um, I'm heading to New Mexico to a conference but will you please come to Colorado I need you to do some meetings for me just like that those meetings I had some of the highest offerings I'd ever given in those places 1600 American dollars because people got set free and healed in the meeting now I'm cashed up and I've got a prophet following me around America. He said, where are you going next? I said, New Jersey. He said, oh, he said, that's a bit far for me. I said, no, here, here's 200 bucks. Jump on the plane, you can come with me. And we started one of the nicest friendships. He's just a powerful man of God. He's been to our tent meeting. Because we allowed the Holy Spirit to fill us. Because we allowed him to tell us each step of what we had to do. We could hear God. Hearing God is everything. It's relational. It's relational. I'd strive for that. If I were you, strive for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Above that, strive for the Holy Spirit to fill you. You have the gift of tongues. That's a sign of him having come to live inside of you. It's a, it's a gift for him to pray on your behalf. You can't utter one syllable in the gift of tongues without it edifying you, building you, speaking to you. It's revelatory. People say, how do you hear so clearly? Oh, when I can't, I just get into tongues. I start to fill myself up. I start to shine. If you see me shining, run. <laughs> serious serious I'm in Colorado and this woman came up and she went <laughs> I thought what's the matter with you too shiny too shiny she was a witch <laughs> They know you when you come into a place. Praise God. They do, mate. I've, I've had people come to my place for deliverance. They didn't tell me that. They said they had a problem. And then when I'm talking to them, they're curled up around the table like this. <laughs> so they're not talking to you face to face. 
You're going to see that. I was doing a shop down here. Can you remember that one? I'm doing a shop down here. Goolwa, as you go into Goolwa, there's the optometrist there just by next door to the Corio Hotel. And Uncle Lou was doing all the shop fronts. And so they hired me to do the concrete ramping into the shops. And there was a shop down the end that had second-hand goods. And I'm busy doing the ramp. And then I realised I've got to get to the other side to finish from the inside. So I jumped in, hopped over the top of it all. And there's a bloke sitting there, I said, G'day mate, how are you? And he went, <laughs> and he ran out, stepped on the concrete, he got, <laughs> ran out, jumps into his van, which has got an open sliding door, and he takes off with stuff falling out of his van, and never came back that day, he left his shop, left everything. I, don't think, I think they lost the cut. <laughs> yeah, I've I got to tell you, he was a warlock and he was doing the drugs in Goolwa. And we just walked in, shiny, <laughs> with the Holy Ghost. Hey? Well, yeah, I, I'm shiny with the Holy Ghost when I'm sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter what... <laughs> It doesn't matter what you do. It's not about being a holy roller. We want to change things to, let's get holy. Well, I've got to tell you, God's with me whether I'm being holy or not. And he didn't, I didn't choose him, he chose me. And he chose you. The only thing is I became obedient because when I started to understand this substance of God was living in me. This wonderful personality of God was living on the inside of me. I understand that wherever I go. I try crazy things sometimes. I, 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 I want to Indian wrestle big guys who've never been beaten just to show them what the power of the Holy Spirit's like. Oh, a skinny one like you, those will they'll eat you up. But I've got to tell, I've got to tell you this. It was, it was Red, wasn't it, down, down at Loxton? Yeah. Now, Red's arms are, mate, they're as big as your legs almost. <laughs> Red's arms used to be out here, you know, like muscle on muscle. And he was, he was boasting that day he was the Indian wrestling champ of the Riverland. And we were around his kitchen, and I said to him, I said, you know what, I reckon I can beat you. <laughs> and he said, Raph. He said, look at your skinny arms. He said, I'll snap them off. <laughs> and I said, I'm telling you, I reckon I can beat you. I've got a witness at the back there. And he's thinking, what is he doing? <laughs> and I said, I reckon I can beat you. And he goes, Raf, don't do it. You're coming in a whole new world of pain. <laughs> I said, come on. Grabbed him. He went, boom. Oh, that was a bit, bit weak. I said, oh, it's okay. I know what it is. I said, I've used my good arm. God wants me to use my bad arm. <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, Raph, I went easy on you that time but I'm going to hurt you this time. I said, do what you can. And there we are, and we're locked in. And he gets me to about there. That way. Further. <laughs> oh, hang on, it's starting to hurt, and I'm doing it to me now. <laughs> and I said this, I said, Holy Spirit, I need your anointing. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. This guy, he was, he was, yeah, one of his elders came through, he said, don't tell anyone. I said, mate, I'm preaching about David and Goliath tonight. Because <laughs> of the unction of the Spirit of God, filled with the Spirit of God. 
Uh, but I want to tell you, you can practice wherever you are. Because he's with you. Ask him. Have time with him at the beginning of a, a day. Say, what are we doing today? He wants you not to practice and learn all about him. He's going to teach you about himself if you allow him in. If you allow him to take over, he will teach you about himself. Because he loves you. Oh, mate, I see you. You know, you can't see this right now because you're in a place that's a bit hard to get out of. But the Spirit of God's telling me you're going to be preaching the gospel with signs and wonders following you. And people are going to get the shock of their lives. Praise God. Because he's going to show you how to get filled. Who wants to be filled now, right now? Just do this. Yeah, get, give him something to pour himself into. There you go. There you go. You don't have to put anything on. You don't have to do anything. Focus on him. Oh, oh, praise God, he's here right now. He, he, he just filled me in a split second. <laughs> I just opened up. And he's filling you. Focus on him. Because that's all you've got to do. Let him out. You're the alabaster jar. He's the perfume. Let him out. He's, he's a substance. He's there. Now you're not learning this just to feel good. You're learning this because you're changing the atmosphere around you. Huh. You're changing the atmosphere around you. He wants to give you trances. He wants to give you visions. Huh. This, is, this is Bible. This is Bible. Paul arrives in Damascus and a bloke comes down and says, God sent me to see you. I've got to lay hands on your eyes. He said, yes, he told me you were coming. They both heard God, the guy that was sent and the guy that was receiving. You've, you've all heard God wanting to fill you, wanting to use you. Say this, say this, you can use anything, Lord. Use me. Fill me up. Don't let me just have status quo religion. Speak to me. Lead me, Lord. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with the substance of heaven, Lord. Fill me. Use me. Divine appointments tomorrow for me, Lord. Give me a divine appointment tomorrow. But let me hear it clearly from you, not guess. Stop guessing. What God wants, he's very clear about what he wants. And he wants you to practice his presence. Open, open heaven above you. That's what you're doing right now. Praise God. Okay, now there's words coming again today. There are words coming. What's the first word? Don't think about it. What's the first word you just got? Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know what I heard? That the sheep is all right. <laughs> That's true. The sheep's all right. <laughs> Is that good? She's got a sheep she's worried about. Is that right, Henrietta? <laughs> <laughs> now that's being filled. See that? <laughs> that's right out of left field. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
<laughs> Praise God. <laughs> That's what happens being filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Isn't that wonderful? We've got to touch of someone, eh? Praise God. Don't touch her, Billy. No, I'm not gonna Don't touch her. I'm just gonna say bless you. Head yeah, head. say it from your seat. <laughs> bless you, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Billy. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it is. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. Filled, filled, filled. Thank you, Lord. Karamasandaravasira. <laughs> See, the slightest thoughts he hears. Oh, okay, that's another teaching, but I'll tell you now. Look, we've all got things. You know, when I shone the light on that, that little figure down there, and the Holy Spirit's in us, or on us, okay? Now, if one of us has got blockages, we're passing on more than just the Holy Spirit. I'm a great one for not laying hands on people hastily. And that's, it's a rule in this place. You know why? Because you don't want to give your rubbish to someone else and you don't want to get theirs. It's a two-way thing. All right? Is that, is that explain it? It says that in uh, Timothy 5.20, isn't it? Is it? Yep. Is it Timothy 5.20? Yep. Don't be hasty in the laying on of hands. Let's just share in the sin of others. All right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, with your tongues, it says this. It says the tongues are a little member in, in your body, but you can murder people with it. You know? <laughs> That's not murder, that's life. <laughs> you see the difference? <laughs> life is... <laughs> 1 Timothy 5, 22. <laughs> if only... If only... <laughs> if only... <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Everybody's saying, oh, I want some of that. I can't just conjure it up. I'm sorry. It's just when he speaks to me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I think we've had enough. Can you guys go home and light up? <laughs> and just get filled. Amen. I want to tell you, every one of you is capable of hearing God capable and being filled with the Holy Spirit, every one of you. There's not one person in this room who can't reach this, can't attain this. Praise God. Praise God. Word of knowledge. Good on you, Jane. <laughs> well, there you go. He's got you. He's got your measure. He wants to fill you up. Is that yours, Ray? Whose is this? Oh, is that yours? Beauty. Huh. Hang on, mate, hang on. Hang on, just looking. <laughs> what do doctors do? They go like... Um, <laughs> has come. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise. Fill up in the Holy Ghost, will you? 
and we're going to have some wild meetings. I'll tell you, we're on the, right on the cusp of God doing some weird and wonderful things here. And it's going to break out. <laughs> 